everybody, Joe Workman here. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at the Parallax Back Stack. That is a part of the Parallax 2 Stack Suite. And this is the Parallax 2 demo file. And this is the Parallax Back page inside that project. It's essentially both pages are the same. I just implemented the basically the stacks twice so you can kind of see different implementations. Now, you might ask, why are there two? <laughs> well, essentially, I think most of the time, Parallax image is probably gonna be better. Um, it is a little bit more performant. Uh, Parallax back, it's animating a background image and that causes a little bit more potential staggering. Um, but I left both stacks in there because I thought that there were some layouts that just work better with Parallax back. Um, there's just more options in terms of how scaling the background image works. And uh, yeah, it could work better in some situations, even though the, the animation performance could be better using Parallax image, okay? So with that covered, let's go ahead and dive into the stack. Just like Parallax image, hope you watch that video. When you add Parallax back, you can add in your content to the stack. It is completely optional. You don't have to have content, but that content will be centered on top of the image, okay? Now let's go dive into the settings here. Um, just as Parallax image, we can go ahead and supply three different images. Uh, drag and drop either they're for small, medium, and large devices. Now these do inherit. So if I don't supply a large or a medium, basically the default will always be small. So if you only wanna use one image for everything, go ahead and use just the small image. But depending on your layouts, you might need to have different sizes or maybe even different aspect ratios because your content on large might be, you know, landscape. Whereas on portrait, it could be, or on small devices, it could be either square or maybe even portrait, right? So you might need to supply different aspect ratio background images in order to properly get a great parallax effect on all devices. Now, next, we also support warehouse images. So you can actually put in URLs to your uh, images, or if you're using total CMS, you can use total CMS macros in here as well. So that allows us to easily integrate into total CMS. Now, next up is scale. So depending on what your image is, you might need to scale the image up. If you are not seeing animations, so here we'll look at the animations. If, you're, if you set your animation settings and you're not seeing the image move the way you would expect, you might need to scale the image up. Okay, so this basically zooms the image in so that there's space to actually animate it. So let's go ahead and if we look at animation, we can we have some simple stuff. We can do top, bottom. Let's go ahead and actually preview this page. Um, so bottom to top, we'll see that that is pretty much probably what most people are gonna use. You can also do top, bottom, which gives us a much more subtle kind of almost a fixed position um, animation effect. Uh, then we can do left to right, and then uh, right to left, and then this one is left to right, okay? So we can do different directions. Then we also provide custom, which allows you to basically supply different percentages. And this is where you can actually get some diagonal. Um, so if you mix and match sort of, I'm going here from 50% to zero and then zero to 100%, basically that's X and Y coordinates, okay? So we are animating the background position for those that are aware with, of background position. So um, we are going from 50% 0% all the way to 0%, 50%. So that's kind of how uh, that worked. Um, but to keep it simple, you can just do these animation, these pre-built animation steps um, in here to get perfectly top down, so on and so forth. Next, an example is providing an overlay. So in this example here, I turned on the overlay and added a background color, uh, which gives us some separation between the parallax image as well as the content. In this case, it's really great because without this overlay, the text would be drowned inside the image. It would be hard to read. So the, adding an overlay really makes this content pop. And last but not least, we have minimum height. So that's basically the height of the parallax container itself. And we can provide minimum height options for small, medium, and large devices. And then last but not least, for all those Foundation 6 and CSS users, we can actually provide a custom class to do special things inside parallax, such as maybe an inset shadow or other amazing things that we can do with CSS and swatches.